Did you know that 75% of all new infections today are considered to be zoonotic diseases? Key reasons for this are deforestation, rapid population growth, the illegal wildlife trade, and also more widespread agricultural practices, all of which are common to Nigeria. Zoonotic diseases, simply put, are diseases that we share with animals. We can get it from animals, we can give it to the animals. Nigeria is rated among the top 10 countries with the highest burden of zoonotic diseases globally. Some of these illnesses you may not have even heard of, as it's usually only those that cause pandemics or widespread epidemics making the global headlines. Like the 2006 bird flu outbreak in the country, or the pandemic flu, which humanity hasn't experienced in a while, but scientists say we are not too far off from. We have seasonal flu every year, but we haven't had pandemic flu for a while. And pandemic flu is when a, a flu virus can come out of the wild into a human being and go from a human being to another human being. If that happens, we are really going to be set, in, set up for another pandemic flu outbreak like the Spanish flu. Right now we're watching the, the different varieties of flu viruses that come out of the wild, out of pigs, out of ducks, out of birds, out of mammals, and we are seeing, watching their genetic structure. And we are observing that we're getting closer and closer to mutations that would allow or permit uh, a contagion moving from person to person and we're, we're literally two or three mutations away from that happening, globally. Diseases like Ebola, Lassa fever, monkeypox, and yellow fever are some other zoonotic diseases that you're likely to have heard of if you live in Nigeria. But what about the ones that are less common, like leptospirosis? One of my pets, uh disease that I used to make an example for people is leptospirosis. It's carried by rats in their feces. Um, they share it with dogs too. Dogs carry leptospirosis. So you find that there's this transmission between rats and dogs. And the rats are all around us. Leptospirosis is a bacterial disease and it mimics so many other diseases. It mimics um, malaria gives the same symptoms as malaria, body pain, increased temperature, decreased appetite and all that. You find yourself unwell, you see you have a fever, you lose appetite and they say, ah, I'm not feeling well. The next thing they say, it's either malaria or typhoid and then we go straight to the pharmacy, we purchase malaria medicines, we purchase antibiotics, we take them and three, four days later we feel well. But you just may not have had malaria you could just have had leptospirosis. The burden of zoonotic diseases is often underestimated due to weak surveillance, poor awareness, and a lack of data. And Nigeria having one of the highest populations of livestock on the continent, one of the highest human populations in the world, and a growing bushmeat trade, does put the country at a greater risk of outbreaks. If you have a mammal that has, by nature, hundreds and hundreds of viruses that live on it, in it, and in its digestive system, in its respiratory tract, in its salivary glands, um, and you kill it, and you take it back to your hut or your house, and you're not wearing gloves, you, you slaughter it, you open it up, blood from that animal, its secretions, its feces, its urine, is coming in contact with you, you are now exposed to hundreds and hundreds of these pathogens. Now one or two or three or even more of them will be able to affect you and infect you and make you sick. That's a zoonotic event. Now if that pathogen is able to affect you and infect you and you are able to infect another human being, then you are now setting up a good environment for an outbreak. Now, the interesting thing about zoonotic diseases is the ones that have been established amongst us, we have developed what I would call a relative amount of immunity to them. We've been exposed, we survive, so we're immune to them. So they really are not 
the cause of immediate concern. The challenge now is the new ones that are coming into the society via the bushmeat trade. We are not prepared for those ones. We do not have immunity against them. The COVID-19 came and took the world to its knees because we didn't have any immunity against it. If you look at animals that live in the wild, if you take one of those species into the laboratory and extract all the pathogens that live in it, you will find hundreds and hundreds of different kinds of viruses. We haven't seen it often enough to make it a health priority and therefore we won't have any treatment or any vaccines against it because how many times have we seen COVID before? You know, who's going to spend money on, on a COVID vaccine? Who's going to spend money on finding out how to treat COVID or SARS when it comes up once every hundred years or something like that? So we, we prioritize our research and development to pathogens that are of major public health concern. While there is still a lack of empirical evidence on zoonoses in Nigeria, that can help us to create and implement policies for stronger public health control, we know that respect plays a key role in the reduction of its prevalence. The self-respect to protect ourselves and educate ourselves on the risks, and also the respect for animals and their boundaries as living organisms. We also know that zoonotic diseases are borderless and we are all at risk of infection. While there have been achievements in controlling some zoonotic diseases like tuberculosis, with cases of early death from TB falling over the past three decades, we also know that zoonotic diseases have the ability to send shockwaves across the world. So for Nigeria and many other countries, adequate public-private investment in zoonotic disease research is needed now more than ever. Leila Johnson-Salami, Arise News.